concept, the concept developed over a very long period, uh, quite a long period, actually. The idea to, to get more and more involved with Luis Bourgeois, I, I had when I visited the art fair in Basel in 2007. And I saw, on this fair, I saw a book made by Luis Bourgeois, which really sort of caught my interest very much. And I was really fascinated by this. It was a book about about memories of a childhood, about a childhood near Paris, and that book was made of, of fabric uh, pieces sewn together. And it was really, I was really, it, it really struck me. I was, I was very much fascinated. And I, then I asked this gallerist to, to uh, for more. I mean, I knew her work, of course. I was aware, aware of her, and, and she told me, well, you can actually meet her. It's, it's not, not that difficult. And um, then I met her, and it was, a, it was a slow process. It was a process of getting closer and closer and developing this. I mean, we, I had some other ideas first, and, and um, then we were, in, in a way, working together. I mean, the intermediary was Jerry Galway, her assistant. Um, but she, was, she, she took really part in this, because she, I sent her a book I wrote, and then she sent me something back and, 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 and then she presented me this, this, this kind of photographic series of the drawings which you see um, behind me and said that would be nice for the show. Well, it is, absolutely, and then, then that developed slowly. You don't see really very many works, um, but you see many works which have many parts. So you see there's, there's a lot to look at, actually. Um, the show is composed of um, key works, and there are some very important works uh, together. There is, there is um, of course, the most important piece she made uh, during her early years in New York, The Blind Leading the Blind, an abstract expressionist sculpture. sculpture as well as one of the most important anthropomorphic abstractions, Janus Fleury, something, um, a work which he thought would be one of her best, a self-portrait and very strange, very fascinating work. Then you have this late circle of drawings called A l'infini, which we see in the background. Uh, you have the most important cell she ever did, Passage d'Angerie, the biggest and the most important cell. Um, that's, uh, you have some very wonderful, very lyrical, late fabric works. Uh, you have one of the most fascinating works dealing with, this, with the unconscious in, in Respite. It's a big installation in 92. So you really have key works from every period of her life. Um, and you, well, it's, it's not meant to be a, re a retrospective, but it's, it's in a way, it is a retrospective. So, so I think if you go to the exhibition, you learn a lot about her and uh, um, about her work, and it's, 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 it might uh, trigger interest to to get more involved, really. She really is the link between modern art and contemporary art. She very much comes from modern art. She gave modern art as a meaning in terms of, um, you know, modern art is, is pure art. She, she, she developed this further. She, she added to modern art um, a story. She added emotion. I shouldn't say a story, emotion is really better. She added emotion to, to modern art. Um, and uh, she, who knew nearly every important artist of the 20th century, the, well, the 30s and the 50s, uh, through herself and through her husband, who was an important art historian, who was a role model for artists and for 
um, especially for women artists. Um, I think you can't see installations by Bruce Norman or Robert Gober without having seen her work. Um, Jenny Holtz is extremely influenced by her. Um, Tracy Emin, uh, all these uh, important artists of, of our time rely um, uh, on Louise Bourgeois.